All of the Real Talk interviews are now available in one place, categorized into topics. Some of them even have bonus downloads. So jump on over to our site and check them out. The link is in the description below. Look, the, the, the reason I wanted to bring Abe on, um, <laughs> he's, um, he's a real, real, like, like for starters, he, he's got a small business, he's got a community he looks after. Um, much like what I'm what I'm trying to do here with the group uh, that you, you guys are in. Uh, so, you know, dealing with the same sorts of problems a lot of you guys are dealing with uh, in terms of, you know, I mean, it's a physical business. We can't go there right now. So that's um, it's challenging for everyone. Um, but as well as that, man, just uh, his military background. And do you want to just give us a little bit of a, yeah, a bit of a rundown, Abe? Yeah, right. So um, so the my, yeah, my background is military. I did pretty much nine years in the army. I spent all of that on operations and then a couple of I've been doing it now. So this is me, House of Training at 60. We're, we're pretty much still in an in infancy in terms of a business not by any means like a, a, you know, a really established, but we're kind of just putting our foot down now, you know, after all the growth and, you know, all that sort of the pains of, of growing a business and making way too many mistakes than I should. But, you know, as you do, you, you develop more and you learn stuff. And, uh, you know, I have uh, over like 150 members at the gym. And mm -hmm. then when COVID-19 started to develop and we started to see uh, this uh, beast that was coming, we kind of had to plan and we had to evolve the business fairly quickly and, and, and where we are, where we are now, which is our virtual gym. Mm, mm. Still, still uh, dropping. Yep. Yeah, we're still dropping you a little bit there, just to, just the connection comes and goes, but yeah. So um, um, yeah, I, I think we should probably maybe talk about that. Um, that um, transition a little bit too, because it's it's been it's been a big shift, right? In the in the way you operate, and the way that you, you know, I mean, such a community there, 150 people, and we're there every day. Yeah, yeah. The the you know so when when COVID nineteen happened, so if we go back to the Friday before the lockdown, I started to get a real sense that we were something was about something big was happening. You could really feel the momentum in the media. And so I started to have a look at just what people were doing over in the UK and the States and Zoom was basically the big thing. But essentially what they were doing for Zoom was that they were going one-on-one um, -on -one coaching. So it was mm. more along those sort of lines. So it's like, say, if I was your coach and you were working out, I'm watching you working out and giving you direction, etc. So over that weekend, I was thinking, man, how can we, how can we then make this a class format? And I didn't really get it. I was like, man, cause, you know, we, a lot of the guys don't have equipment. And I was like, man, fuck, what are we going to do? And then uh, we were boxing on the Monday morning and bam, it hit me. And it, I'm not the first person to think of this. I think someone, people in the UK and America were already doing this. I was like, let's give my equipment away. Let's take everything out of our gym and give it to our members so that they've got tools that they can utilize. And we can take that stress out of their life because at the moment, everything is imploding. Mm -hmm. And the gym is a huge part of a lot of these guys' lives. So it's like, man, how can we get, how can we access, how can they access equipment and at the same time still train with us? So I was like, well, we could give them equipment. Then we can actually run a barbell class. Then we can actually run a Metcon class. We can still run Zoo and then we can run mobility and kids' classes. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, as you saw, Tuesday, I kind of winged it. <laughs> and then Wednesday, winged it some more. And it's getting better and better and better. And I, think, I, I, I totally relate. It's exactly what I'm doing with these lives. You know, my first yeah. one was a shocker too. So, <laughs> yeah, like, you know, and, and you've got to have that whole mindset of like, fuck it. Don't overthink it. Do it. Figure out the nuts and bolts as you go. Don't don't sit on your laurels and go, oh, I need to plan this and to implement or, and get micro into the details. That yeah, or, or so well, shit. Well, is my business is shut. There's nothing I can do, right? Well, there is yeah. things you can do. It's just, yeah, yeah, hundred percent. And you know, it is, it is, it's the way you conceptualize the challenge that's laid ahead of you. You know, when we're in the military, when something happened, whether we got shot at or whether uh, something big was happening politically, and we had to change the way we think, uh, the way we do things. 
one of the first things we did was we would always assess the situation. For us, we, assessing the situation for us meant that we had to go, how can my first and only concept was, how can I keep my community together? Because, you know, as you know, right, the community is so important. It's like a hub and it's a hub of all these different people from different walks of life who network business wise, who uh, have massive friendship groups, who lean on each other, who drink far too much piss together, all of those things. But, but we needed to keep it close. And so my only goal was how do I make this work? And have I got the right tool and, and all the processes in place? 100% no. Haven't got the right mm -hmm. thing in place yet. However, I have something in place that I can work with. It's like a blank canvas and I've just laid the first few strokes. And all I'm doing now is laying more strokes and more strokes and more strokes. And if I don't like it, I can rub it out and do another stroke somewhere else. And that's all we're doing because we're just like a, we're putting a big band aid on a bullet wound. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and it's, uh, you know, and for myself being a part of it, it is, it is refreshing to have, um, to still be able to have that connection with, you know, because I mean, man, we're in there, we're in there five, six days a week, sweating, mm -hmm. bleeding, swearing, and yeah. um, to, to, you know, yeah. to, I mean, obviously it's not the same, but it's it's still to be able to still belong to something like that is 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 massive. So, um, yeah. First of all, just I haven't really you formally know, thanked you, but thank you. You, you know, a shit day, and then all of a sudden you see people jump up. Yeah, well, thanks, man. And like you know, if you ever look at, you know, some days you're like, oh man, I'm gonna rat shit. I don't know if I'm gonna train, and you link in, and all of a sudden you get like, you know, this channel and this faith, and you know, Simon, and you're bantering, and it's just like. Mm. Oh man, it's like being back at a gym and you can kind of forget about things. And that's one of the things with, you know, in this environment that we're in at the moment, living in close quarters with family and friends and flatmates and whatever, all by yourself. Sometimes that, that, that one hour, one hour, 45 minutes, half an hour, whatever it is, that part of your day, you can Get leave you all through. the stresses behind it. Yeah. And it, you can just blank your mind. And that's the beauty of, of training in those, in those uh, periods, you know? Yeah, so and that's that sort of what leads into what I wanted to bring you on to talk about was some of the stuff around mindset, routine, living in close court, that kind of stuff. Because, man, like, I mean, you know, I mean, I've been self employed, so I worked out of home for a long time, but there's a lot of people that have never experienced this. And, you know, a lot of them, you know, kiss their kids goodbye, walk out the door, and, and, and it's, a, it's an afterthought, and now they're there <laughs> yeah. all day. So, yeah. yeah. And, and it's super hard, right? Like, I, I'm no different, right? I've got, you know, one of my kids. Just sitting there hanging out and and for me i'm still doing this and i'm by no means the best at this at all but the thing with routine and and the way we used to practice this in the military when we used to teach prisoner of war training so say for example you know we're in battle and you get captured the first thing you're taught is find routine and routine gives you an element of control of your life in, in whatever situation that's evolved whether if you're captured you're captured you can't do anything about it, you catch it. So find a routine that you can work and that is solely yours and you protect that as much as possible. So what we've done with our guys is we've taught them routine is everything. Find whatever routine that is and stick to it. It doesn't mean that you have to do what I do and get up at five every morning and walk the dog and then jump on the bike <laughs> for 20 minutes and then stretch and mobilize and then get ready for the class and blah, 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 blah. I do that because it's my business and, and I, that's what I love. Yours could be, I could get up at 8.30, I have breakfast, I ring mom. <laughs> you know I'm getting up at 8 every day. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You, you ain't getting up at fucking 8. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, like you got to find out what that routine is. And the routine is hyper important. Now, now, for a lot of people, and this is me included, I'm now having to learn how to dictate my routine with my kids, right? And my family. And, and because I'm used to being away for 12 to 14 hours a day, so all of a sudden now I've got them involved and I'm learning this. I get it wrong most days, but uh, I'm learning how to try and be better at it, get them off technology, uh, play with them more, make them interactive. So, you know, they come into the gym a lot with me and, and we do little bits and pieces here and there. And, and, uh, and that's what kind of what we're focusing on. But everything is centered around routine. If they don't have routine, if you don't have routine, this is going to be because, you know, people say, oh, we're here for four weeks plan for eight easily plan for eight you know and that's that, that's essentially the, the nuts and bolts of it look they wouldn't have given us given out 12 weeks of subsidy if it was only if they're only planning for four no yeah. yeah exactly it's a pipe dream if you think it's four so you know like that and it's going to be super tough for a lot of people like a lot of people are going to be you know we and we are no different we're just we're in that same boat as well 
but there's always light at the end of the tunnel and the key is, is to make sure you understand what that light's going to look like at the end and the way that was way that i'm kind of manipulating the business is that i'm going well how can i evolve this so when we do go back to our facility you know we can we can pick up where we left off but at a, at a way higher tempo and way higher uh, uh, yeah, I mean, man, having that than we have in the past. Having that live stuff there, you know, um, is there a way you could do that within your gym as well, so that members that are travelling yeah. or you know, I mean, that's that's just yeah. one thought about how you start to pivot and revol evolve your business now, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, and and that's you know, you, that's a really good way to to to, to phrase it up as a pivot, and um, you know, we are pivoting in a way that you know, I'm already thinking, okay. Uh, could could we run was a live set as we are doing our classes? We have a, a coach mic'd up and we have a camera set up and you can visually watch the class and hear the coach talk and cues and accesses and stuff. Could you watch that? Or you know, say if industrial athletic were to leave from upstairs, or could I then turn that room into a virtual room and we mm. could run virtual classes upstairs? Is that something that we could do? You know, there's all these little things and avenues. I'm like, well, there's this hasn't actually been a bad thing. This actually allowed me to think instead of just like this, 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 I'm now going this, this, bang, I'm over here. And and then I'm over in this area. And once I get to there, I'm fucking going to be over here. And once I'm over here, God knows where I'll go, but I'll probably be back over here somewhere, you know, way higher. And that's kind of where I'm you know, sort of transversing. Yeah, I really like your choice of language there. It's, it's allowed you to think. Um, you know, Putting, putting the brakes on everything and making everyone stay at home really is an opportunity uh, for all of us to mm. go, go inside a little bit and and think about, yep. you know, obviously our businesses, but what's really important, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, and, you know, and it's one, one of the coolest things I've found with this is that, you know, a lot of people say, oh, I meditate and I this. Probably my meditation is when I walk with the dog and that's where I do my best thinking is I'm like, oh, that's where I came up with the, breakfast with Abe, you yeah. know, that thing we do now at 808 in the morning, you know, because most mornings I have breakfast with people because they're in yeah. the gym or whatever, and we're sitting there having a feed. And then all of a sudden I'm going to have breakfast by myself. It's like, oh, fuck that. So I might just, um, I might just I'm, share that story a little bit because um, for people that, that aren't familiar with your brand, um, so basically uh, the first day of lockdown, Abe just decided to go live on his Instagram and, 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 you know, Everyone sort of jumped on, oh, what's going on here? But now it's become a thing. And every morning at 8.08 a.m. for the last week, we've all been jumping on and just, just having some banter and having some chats. But, man, it's really got us all bought into that community. So is there a way you can do that with your staff, with your customers? You're something out there, you know? Um, 100%. 100%. You know, you just got to think laterally. You know, I, I think for so long, New Zealand, and I think business worldwide has, has always been, okay, this is how we do business this is what we do, blah, this, blah, that. And this. Now, you now. I mean, business has changed. I think we said yesterday uh, on the chat, right, we talked about, you know, currency now does not just mean fiscal dollars, cents, mm, and stuff mm. like that. You know, we, we, a lot of people are going to be bringing back the bartering system. Yeah. You know, web developers who have no money, but they want to train. Dude, I'll sort out your website. Just let me come on and train with you guys for a couple of weeks. Yeah, sure, go for it. Yeah. You know? that is still a currency that is transferred. Mm -hmm. That's where people are going to start to look right. Like in my head, you've got to look a little bit outside the box and think it's not just pay, 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 KPIs, KPIs, KPIs. Yes, in some aspects and some businesses like sales, that's, a, that's really important. But you've got to think a little bit more outside the box. And I think for us, that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to think really laterally and understanding how can we utilize our, our community to keep us afloat because that's really important because Mm. If we're not off, like we don't have a gym to go back to, and, but at the same time, how do we then still level up and keep pushing the boundaries of what we're doing? Mm -hmm. Where well, that comes from our community, and that's where we can start to utilize. You know, like I use Autumn's husband yesterday, who's a lawyer, yeah. helped me up big time with my lease stuff. That twenty-seven point five clause pretty, was that what he talked to you about? Yeah, well, yeah, we had well, we had Brent on here the other day. I, I signed a yeah, well, I signed an early edition that didn't have that. Oh. However, mm. I, I had signed an agreement of lease, but I had not signed a deed of lease. And under 4.3 of your agreement to lease, if you have not signed a deed of lease, a, you know, deed of lease proper, it is perceived that you have you have signed the most current up-to-date edition. And that's where we got Ooh. to move on. There you go. I'm yeah. sure that's a... I would uh, never have picked that. 
Yeah, I'm sure that's a lot of value for some of the people that are watching here because that the lease thing has come up a few times. Um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, four point. I think it's four point one and four point three of your agreement to lease, mm. which is a standard thing that you originally signed. If you have not signed a deed of lease, that should get out of jail. And I think a lot of landlords kind of leave it at that agreement to lease too. Yeah, yeah. What well, you because they don't want to pay with the solicitor, right? They don't want mm. to then pay the solicitor to draft up the full thing. You know, probably warehouse and stuff too, but not a lot of small businesses because it's an extra thousand dollars they want to have to pay. And um, yeah, so you know, Luke and there hooked me up, so we're up, we're up to hook them up. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of that's that's the good thing. That's awesome. Hey, so um, look, we're, we're starting to get through the time, but um, two little tips on living in close quarters and exercise for, for the people that are listening. All right, one, one is make sure you have separation time. Even though you're in close quarters, you need to have at least two to three hours a day away from whoever you're hanging out with, whether it's your wife, your kids, whatever. You all need time away from each other because you're used to it. All of a sudden, you're in, encapsulated and close in each other. You need to create time away. That could be that you know you are at one end of the house and your partner's at the other end of the house, and you don't see them between one and four. Awesome. That's really important because otherwise, if you're just on top of each other the whole time, it's going to be a bad day at the office. So that's that's one. Two, exercise. Any form of training, no matter what it is, is better than no form of training. So even if it is, I get up and I walk twenty minutes in the morning. And 15 minutes in the evening, wicked. That's perfect. That is better than looking at the TV and going, oh, I should be walking. Mm. Oh, the fittest documentaries are on. I'll watch that instead of actually being fit. So any form of training is better than nothing. And it clears your head. It gets you away from your screens. It gets you away from anything. Maybe chuck some sounds on. Um, you know, a lot of people listen to audio books. I do that naturally anyway. So I'd much rather listen to music because I'm inspired by music personally as a, as a creative. And... Yeah, so crack some sounds on and do whatever that floats your boat. Yeah, yeah, it's so not all. It's not all about being a not all about being a hardcore doing doing burpees and pull ups and, and all of that. Yeah, <laughs> um, so, and, and certainly, um, you know, anyone that is that is getting a bit of that cabin fever, those those two things are probably some of the, the greatest bits of advice I've heard in a while. Yeah, some time out outside. All of the Real Talk interviews are now available in one place, categorised into topics. Some of them even have bonus downloads, so jump on over to our site and check them out. The link is in the description below.